when CDC's guidance says that immunocompromised people are meant to be avoided by the general public, I, I don't know how to identify, like, my, my, my immunocompromised state, my chronic illnesses are not apparent to the general public. We need to have a real conversation about how we operationalize this guidance. At the same time, CDC's guidance to healthcare professionals, and I, again, I understand that it is necessary as someone whose life literally depends on the healthcare service and delivery system remaining intact. I understand it is necessary that the service and delivery system continue. However, guidance that tells physicians and nurses and NPs and PAs, and I could go on and on, every single person in a hospital is important to make that hospital run, as, as you well know. When that guidance tells folks, for example, to leave, to go back to work while, while mildly, mildly symptomatic, I, I don't know what mildly symptomatic means. My healthcare, my treating healthcare professionals, the nurses who take care of me, in my physician's office at, at, at the the healthcare system that, that you used to practice at, they don't know what that means. And my point here is, is that when guidance for quarantine and isolation is designed in such a way that people like me and the millions of people I represent are protected, that guidance protects everyone. If you are protecting us, you are protecting everyone. And right now we are not being protected by this guidance. And so I, I understand there are technical challenges here. Um, I, I still do not understand personally why the use of rapid antigen tests, I, 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 I've, heard the, I, I, I've, heard, I've heard your briefings with healthcare professionals. I, I understand what CDC has said so far. It does not speak to my concerns as a chronically ill, immunocompromised and disabled person who has to go to healthcare settings in order to continue to live, literally. And so reserving some number of, of rapid antigen tests for a population we know is positive for SARS-CoV-2. It's, it's literally one of the highest risk. It's almost a tautology to say that people who have COVID-19 are carrying SARS-CoV-2, but that's true. And so how, how do we target interventions to protect immunocompromised, disabled, chronically ill people who are, need to go to healthcare settings? How do we target CDC guidance so that when I am out in public, people, people are protecting me People are protecting Elena's child. Um, these are, again, just top lines. I, I don't expect you to have nitty gritty details here. I, I want to be clear. I'm just saying if guidance is operationalizable in a way that protects me and people like me, it will protect others. The other thing I wanted to mention very brief, briefly is I, I know the administration has recently uh, announced a mask initiative um, Data for progress, I, I, I looked at this, 39, 40% of people are still wearing cloth masks. You know, director, because I, you, you wrote about this in 2020. You wrote an invited commentary in JAMA, Internal Medicine, about how great N95s are at protecting healthcare providers. If nothing else, if nothing else, when I go to a hospital, I shouldn't have to worry about source control, adequate source control, that the nurse has a surgical mask because there is no guidance forcing essentially for-profit healthcare operators like health, you know, hospital systems, nonprofit health across the board. This is not a siloed problem. We are seeing doctors and nurses not being given sufficiently protective PPE to protect patients. And your own words from 2020, I just, I do not understand the failure to issue guidance saying a surgical mask or an N95 is more protective because people look to CDC for this, even though even though 40% of people, 39, 40% of people are still using cloth masks, people understand that N95s are more protective. We asked, I checked. I didn't want to come here today and talk to you unprepared. And so this is the sort of guidance where if everyone is using a mask that provides better source control, and by that, just for the non-public health folks, we mean prevents them from uh, essentially breathing, spewing uh, SARS-CoV-2 viral particles into the air. That's what source control provides. If, if we're not, if, if, if there are steps available to protect everyone, to provide better source control, that will protect everyone. It will protect me. It will protect other people on this call. It would protect the people who can't be with us here today. Um, and that's the sort of guidance, just top line, don't want to go through a laundry list. I just wanted to give a couple of examples of the kind of policymaking that if it were inclusive, 
and worked with chronically ill, immunocompromised and disabled people would actually protect everyone. Uh, 